Thank you very much. Uh, Letizia, uh, for this kind uh, introduction. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me to take part in this initiative, which I think is very, very interesting. Thanks, everybody, for um, being here, for taking the time to listen to me. It's a real pleasure to share with you um, the information of this, um, of, of this uh, um, European framework for clear teacher education. We developed uh, several years ago. Um, I was the coordinator of the project, but I had a very powerful team with me because uh, it was uh, um, David Marsh and uh, Dieter Wolf and Peter Mehisto who um, helped me and, and the four of us uh, deal with this um, framework, which I'm going to tell you about. I think the audio is okay now, um, so let's uh, go ahead. Right, um, this uh, um, framework, this European framework for clear teacher education is the result of a project uh, which was supported by the European Centre uh, for Modern Languages in Graph. Um, the European Centre for Modern Languages in Graz, the ECML, um, which is a part of the uh, Language Policy Unit of the Council of Europe, uh, launches every three years a new programme related to uh, language, languages, uh, uh, acquisition, uh, studies, etc. Um, they have just started uh, a new one, but it was in 2008, from 2008 till 2011, that we took part in this uh, call and uh, we uh, worked in this project, which was called Clear CD, Clear Competence Bill, uh, Development, to develop and create this um, European framework for clear teacher education. This is the new um, uh, the new midterm program. This is the new uh, project uh, program which the ECML has just uh, started. Uh, there uh, you have um, if, if you go to to its website you'll find all the information. They develop very interesting uh, projects and it is possible to cooperate and take part in the development of these projects for anyone by applying to the national authorities. So if you go to the uh, website uh, you have there on the screen the, the program website you could also be able to uh, maybe take part and, and cooperate in one of the uh, projects. There is a very interesting uh, uh, issue they publish uh, every uh, term, which is called the European Language Gazette, with uh, information on on uh, what the ECML is doing and what the uh, ECML experts are doing um, in the uh, language uh, sphere. You can uh, go there and subscribe if so you wish, and it is quite interesting because it, it keeps you updated on, on the work of this part of the uh, policy unit of the uh, Council of Europe. Uh, the ECML has also these um, opportunities, gives you these opportunities to uh, use their publications, to take part in the European Day of Languages, and they also provide uh, training and consultancy for uh, member states. So, and even sometimes for no member states of the of the uh, ECML, which is an extended up agreement of the of the Council of Europe. Well, in any case, as you can see um, on the screen now, one of the publications is the European Framework for Clear Teacher Education. It is there uh, central on the slide. Mm, the, um, this is what the European Framework for Clear Teacher Education looks like. 
uh, in its own paper um, uh, edition, uh, publication. Uh, it was published in uh, English and in German, um, paper based, but, but there is also an online version which is in English, German, and French, and which can be accessed through the, um, the um, website, the link you are seeing just now on the screen. Um, it has been translated into several uh, different uh, languages because the different uh, ministers of education in, in several um, countries in, in Europe uh, were interested in using it and, um, and we'll comment on how to use it uh, a bit uh, later. Right, so this is what it looks like. Let's talk now about what it is. Uh, let's start with the definition of CLEAR because that is the basis for everything else. I think Gisela Langer uh, mentioned three different uh, definitions of CLIL. This is the last one. This is the one which appears uh, in the uh, effect in the European framework for quality education. Uh, it was um, rewritten in 2010, just before we published the, uh, the framework. And um, several people who cooperated with us uh, during this uh, project, along this project, um, gave us some feedback and, and uh, cooperated in, in, in this new um, definition. Which reads, clearly is a deal-focused educational approach in which an additional language is used for the learning and teaching of both content and language with the objective of promoting both Content and language mastery to predefined levels. This last part is um, is new. It it didn't appear. It doesn't appear in other uh, clear definitions. And it is there because one issue that all uh, clear teachers were facing uh, at the time and and are still facing is okay. When we start doing clear and we start teaching. Uh, geography through German, for example. Um, we exactly know which is the geography curriculum, the official curriculum, which every uh, Ministry of Education um, um, publishes. Uh, so we exactly know what we, as teachers of geography, for example, need to teach our students. The problem is, the problem is, do we know which language content is associated to that geography curriculum, for example? Not really, because um, what the ministers of education haven't done in uh, the, the most of them. I mean, not all of them, some of them have worked in this field as well, but most ministries of education haven't uh, published or developed or created an integrated curriculum of content subjects plus language. And this is a problem for all content teachers uh, who teach through CLIL. Why? Because they know which content they need to teach but they don't really know which language they need to teach. So teachers need to work uh, to just um, get to a compromise and find and decide on themselves uh, which language they should be promoting when teaching certain um, content subjects. Um, Making language visible in the uh, content uh, class um, without knowing which uh, language uh, should be taught is quite complicated. So one 
uh, one thing which uh, educational authority should bear in mind is that it would be really necessary to devise and publish this integrated um, uh, curricula because they would make teachers work so much easier. Okay, so this is the uh, CLIL definition and the important issue there is that when we teach through CLIL we don't teach a uh, language and content or content and language separately. What we do is to integrate both things and teach both things together. This is a real challenge. Why? Because when teachers teach uh, in this integrated way, um, there is something they, they need to do, there is something they really have to do. Um, when teachers teach in their mother tongue or in their students' mother tongue, even if the content is uh, cognitively complex, students understand and know the language, or at least most of the language. But the problem is when a teacher starts using a different medium of instruction. A medium of instruction, a language which um, his or her students don't really master. And then uh, the complexity is double for these students because they need to understand the content and they need to know the language. To integrate both things, to integrate both things requires from teachers a um, number of skills and competencies which they also need to acquire because um, usually teachers haven't been trained to do this kind of job. Teachers haven't been trained to integrate uh, the content and the language. And it is very difficult. Um, most teachers uh, get this pre-service training uh, which makes reference to their own subject. But uh, they very rarely get this um, training, pre-service training, in the integration of both things. You can be trained in their content and you can be trained in the language. But it is very rarely that you are, you as a teacher are uh, trained in integrating both. When a teacher changes the medium of instruction, he or she also needs to change the method of instruction because the learning context is different. So um, this is a very basic concept, but not everybody realizes that it needs to be taken into practice. And educational authorities sometimes um, miss the point. They, they just devise this training uh, for teachers in the content and in the language, but not in the integration of both. To be able to integrate content and language, teachers need to have specific skills and need to adapt uh, elements which have always existed in good pedagogy, but which now need to be working together, need to be integrated. So there is nothing really extremely new in CLIL pedagogy, but CLIL in a way um, covers all different resources and tools uh, belonging to good pedagogy, even traditional uh, pedagogy, uh, but CLIL puts them all together so that teachers can make use of any resource 
to be able to teach through an additional language. Right. The fact is that teachers undertaking Quill, teaching through Quill, need to be prepared to be experts in the content subject, be experts in the language they are using as a medium of instruction, uh, be experts in best practice in teaching and learning. That's to say uh, they need to know good pedagogy. They need to be able to integrate content and language and good pedagogy. And they also need to be able to integrate the CLIL process, the CLIL uh, teaching without, within an educational uh, organization or institution. Because otherwise, um, you could have this uh, strange situation in which the CLIL strands go this way, the non-CLIL strands go that way. And CLIL and the CLIL uh, processes, the CLIL teaching, needs to be absolutely integrated in the uh, educational institution, in the school lives, right? OK. Um, it is really difficult for a teacher to be able to change it, his or her mindset, because we are used to teaching in a certain way. We have been trained to teach in a certain way. Changing the medium of instruction means changing also the, the uh, method of instruction, and we need to learn how to do that. So there must be somebody, there must be some um, education provider who teaches us and trains us in how to do that. Um, there is an added uh, issue to the point I was mentioning, and that is that even though CLIL has been implemented in most European uh, countries, even it, uh, it is now part of mainstream education in most European countries, um, there is not a single model and there is not a blueprint for CLIL. That means that every country, even every region, has developed its own approach to CLIL. Um, every um, CLIL program has something peculiar, different to other uh, CLIL programs. This makes things even more difficult. And this happens because when CLIL was born, uh, it started to be implemented through pilot projects. And, and uh, of course, when you develop a, a pilot project, um, you learn um, as you do. So um, the different projects, uh, the different CLIL projects, the different CLIL programs which were implemented uh, at the uh, beginning of, of, the, um, of this um, uh, CLIL uh, departure point, let's put it that way, um, all these uh, projects, all these programs were different. Each of those developed uh, a different um, views, developed uh, different uh, resources, tools, uh, different elements of pedagogy. And the problem was that there was no, uh, there was no um, transfer of knowledge. There was no transfer from one project to another. I'm talking about the very beginning of the uh, implementation process. That has changed uh, along the uh, years, and that is different now, of course, that uh, we are uh, taking part, we are taking part in, in uh, initiatives like this one. So we are all exchanging practices, good practices, knowledge, tools, etc., and also solutions that we have found to be able to face the challenges that we have uh, been stepping on the, the way. But the fact is that um, 
there is not one model for Clio. And since there is not one single model for Clio, there is not one single model for a Clio teacher. Um, there are many elements which um, are um, influencing these differences in, in Clio. There are many elements which are um, which are justifying, in a way, this um, uh, not being a blueprint, a blueprint or, or a single model for CLIL or for the CLIL teacher. One is that um, we belong to very different uh, cultures, uh, that there are different um, political approaches to education, that there are very different pedagogies, that the um, skills that teachers have in the different countries and uh, different regions vary, that the um, training teachers get in different countries and different uh, regions uh, is different. So there are, um, there are many differences among us, but there are also many commonalities, and there are many commonalities uh, in, in these uh, CLIL programs or CLIL projects, which could be transferred from one to another. Um, so the concept which was lying behind the development of the European framework for CLIL teacher education was that there were so many teachers working in CLIL in Europe which had to operate individually, who didn't have a macro framework to guide them. And then we, we also realized that uh, the teacher training uh, programs fully fledged, fully developed, um, only existed in, in, in several countries, but not in all of them. And then we realized that the, there was this demand, there was this great need of having a common curricula, a common framework, which could be transferable, adaptable to the different uh, characteristics and specificities of each country, each program, but transferable. Um, that's uh, the concept lying behind the, the framework, and, uh, and those were the, the issues which worried us, uh, or we were concerned about when we started working in this framework. Um, of course, there were uh, clear teacher training courses um, everywhere. Every um, educational authority had uh, developed uh, training courses, every education provider had developed uh, training courses for CLIL teachers. Um, if, if they hadn't done that, uh, CLIL uh, wouldn't have been implemented because its uh, requirements are quite uh, strong. But, um, well, these training courses varied so much from uh, one uh, country and, and one region to, to another. Um, when we started working on the framework, we um, did uh, we carried out some uh, research work, and we um, and we found uh, that uh, there were uh, so many training courses which had similarities. Um, there were very strong differences, um, but there were some similarities. Um, the, the training course uh, you have on, on the screen now is an example uh, which was uh, provided by Carmel Mary Coonan. Uh, she came to cooperate with us when we were uh, developing the, the macro framework, as uh, did Gisela Allanger and uh, other uh, experts. And, uh, for example, this was one of the CLIL uh, 
uh, training uh, courses that she was working on at the time. Um, the contents were action research, the school curriculum in CLIL, how to integrate and create synergies, the school, the school curriculum, how to define goals and objectives in CLIL, teaching in the new learning environment, uh, uh, that's to say how teaching in CLIL was different um, to teaching in, in uh, or through Italian. And then uh, she was doing, uh, uh, she was adding the, the research or, or investigation on the epistemological nature of a school discipline and the teaching methodology associated with it, um, uh, the analysis of electronic materials used for CLIL uh, teaching, the methodological use of materials, the cultural and intercultural dimension of CLIL, the evaluation and certification in CLIL. And this was a key issue, the evaluation and certification in CLIL. This is an issue which hasn't been um, sorted out uh, yet in, in, in most uh, European countries. Well, another example of the of a, a CLIL uh, tra teacher training course, which was also uh, provided by Carmel Mary Kunan, uh, had to do with CLIL methodology, with the language work for teachers and students, ways of supporting students' linguistic needs, analyzing and planning the different components of a lesson, helping students understand a text, interactive ways of giving input, teaching and activating key vocabulary, attending and supporting multiple intelligences, getting students to think rather than just receive. And this, um, this has to do with something that I haven't mentioned yet, but uh, which I think is very important. Because um, most times, we put the training focus on our teachers, but we forget our students. And uh, our students sometimes also need to be trained in CLIL. Because if for teachers, this is such a different approach for students it is also such a different approach there are students who refuse to learn through CLIL because it requires a, a change of mindset also for them and it is so difficult for them to to just um, acquire the skills and and change uh, their mindsets but uh, we'll deal with that um, some other time let's go ahead with this uh, CLIL teacher uh, training courses. Um, getting students to think rather than just receive, recaps, consolidation and revision, um, which, um, which uh, uh, has to do with uh, these techniques and resources teachers use uh, to teach students when they um, uh, don't, when they lack the, the, the skills and the mastery of the language. Um, classroom language and asking questions, presenting models of good lesson planning, which is so important for us teachers to know how to plan a lesson in, in CLIL, presenting models of good teaching, and then um, uh, teachers were trained in, uh, in um, writing lessons and, and uh, designing demo lessons um, to be able to then uh, design proper uh, lessons or, or lessons. Okay. Two relevant, two relevant conclusions came out of this research we did on different CLIL teacher training courses. What was that CLIL teacher training was carried out through micro frameworks, that's to say, through uh, frameworks which could not, which, which were not transferable because they were um, designed specifically for a specific project, for a specific program, for a specific course, for a specific school. And then the second relevant conclusion was that, of course, there is not a common CLIL teacher profile. And uh, this uh, CLIL teacher training doesn't or didn't have as an objective creating one common CLIL teacher profile which could be certified 
uh, some way by some kind of generalized qualification. After several years, uh, we are still there. Um, we haven't been able to develop a, 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 clear, a common clear teacher profile, that's to say, a, a profile which can be transferred from one country to another or from one region to another. Of course, every country and every region and every um, educational authority uh, has um, designed a clear teacher profile based on the competencies the clear teachers need to acquire or to have to teach through CLIL. But this is on the micro level. This is on the local level or the regional level. In the uh, best of situations, uh, it is uh, in the uh, national level. But there is not a common CLIL teacher profile uh, transferable from one country to another in, in Europe. And this makes things more difficult. Of course, there is not a way of uh, certification for CLIL teachers, not everywhere. There are some countries which have developed one, but not, not every country has developed a, a, uh, a formal way of certifying CLIL teachers. Right? Uh, this may be different uh, for Italy, for example, Italy is one of the countries which have developed, um, uh, which have developed uh, uh, clear uh, teacher profiles, clear teacher certifications. But it is the exception; most other countries haven't. And I must say that you are very lucky that uh, you have uh, such clear experts among your educational authorities who have been working very hard in this, uh, in this, on this issue and, and uh, they have been able to define this, um, this kind of uh, tool. Uh, it makes things very, it makes things much easier for uh, CLIL teachers and it makes uh, things much easier for students also because there is a common uh, way of approaching uh, CLIL teacher training. There is a common uh, uh, way of uh, approaching how uh, CLIL teachers need to acquire their competencies and which these competencies are. So, but Italy is, is uh, an, an exception. And the fact is that even if Italy has this profile, there is not a common European profile. And that was something which worried us, and that was um, uh, a very strong uh, uh, concern for us when we started working on the uh, European framework. Um, the concept uh, lying uh, behind this uh, European framework was that uh, there was the need of harmonizing these clear teachers' qualifications. There was the need to design this academic program for uh, CLIL, which should be implemented by key European centers of expertise in this field. What did we mean when we talked about these key European centers of expertise in the field? Uh, well, we meant uh, education ministries. Uh, we meant um, um, education authorities, European education authorities. Uh, we meant education uh, providers. And of course, if that uh, system was created, it would also be necessary an agreed series of objectives for the professional development of clean teachers, and then a regular assessment of achievement um, in the, uh, in the uh, acquiring of these competences, and then a system of review, um, a, a system which would allow feedback and, and uh, review of the competences and, uh, required and of the 
uh, goals uh, achieved by this uh, uh, system, by this uh, academic uh, program. What we really wanted to develop was not a program. It was a tool which would allow every um, educator provider, every um, educational authority to develop a framework which could be transferable um, and which was based on similar uh, competencies, on similar uh, um, tools, on similar resources. Which type of CLIL training would be advisable? We thought um, one which could define the multiple competences needed to teach through CLIL, one which was designed at macro level to allow generalization, um, a training which would be flexible to be adaptable to each country and to each region uh, specific context one which could be used as a dialogue basis to define a common, a European common CLIL teacher profile. And of course, one which was in alignment with the European portfolio of languages, with the European uh, common framework of reference for languages, with their key competences for, uh, life long, for long life uh, learning. Um, which uh, could be in alignment with the European Qualifications Framework um, because that would allow reflection and assessment and feedback on teaching practice and because if you are developing uh, something on the European level you need to think about the um, coordination between, or between this tool and all the rest of tools which have been already created. So we have different European frameworks for different um, uh, things uh, with different objectives. Uh, a new one should be in alignment with those already existing. Um, what was our aim, uh, the aim of the CLIL CD uh, team? First, to address the needs of teacher training and professional development in CLIL. Uh, in a way, um, we, we also wanted to make the CLIL teaching profession um, more attractive because it is hard to be a CLIL, teaching, a CLIL teacher. Then we also wanted to provide an adaptable framework for quality training and for professional development of CLIL teachers. And then we wanted to create something which would support unification of CLIL teacher education standards across Europe. So address the needs of teacher training, provide an adaptable framework, and support unification of CLIL teacher education standards. Those were our three aims. Um, what we um, developed the, the European framework for clear teacher education um, was designed as a macro structure, as a macro structure which could be um, transformed, adapted to micro context. So we developed it as a macro structure which would allow design and implementation of CLIL uh, capacity building, of CLIL teacher capacity building in a flexible way. We didn't want to make um, a prescriptive framework. We didn't want to make um, something or, or a framework uh, which uh, you had to comply with or which education providers would have to comply with 100%. No, we wanted something flexible because um, it was absolutely necessary that this tool could be adaptable to different uh, teaching and learning contexts. 
So we designed this structure. Um, this is what you find on the website when you uh, click on that link and uh, enter the European Framework for Clear Teacher Education in three different languages, as you can see. And uh, when you get into the real thing, you find that it is divided in four different parts. Um, the introduction, terminology, target professional competences, and professional development modules. Okay, the introduction makes a reference to what the European Framework for Clear Teacher Education is, um, its aims, its background, what is the concept of curriculum development, which are the challenges um, uh, that CLIL uh, teachers and CLIL teacher trainers are facing, and then our part devoted to uh, acknowledgements. But as you can see in the introduction, you can find all the bases for uh, what we would um, develop for the uh, real uh, framework. Then um, you have a list of key terminology because we considered that, um, well, first of all, because being researchers, because the four of us uh, have been working as researchers for years, um, being researchers, we are we were aware of the of the need for teachers and, and teacher educators to know exactly what we meant with certain words, which for us were key to understand um, the framework and how it works. So uh, there is a list of terminology here which tries to make light to clarify uh, what the um, framework is and how to work with it. Then we get to the target professional competences. The target professional competences is a list of the competences that the CLEAL teachers need to acquire um, when working in CLEAL. Sorry, it's taking some time for the slide to upload. Um, let's see. Um, is there? Anyway, yeah, there they are. Okay. The target professional competences is um, are the target professional competences that the CLIL teacher is expected to acquire or to further develop during the training program. And there is uh, there are eight groups of target professional competences. Each of these group of uh, each of these groups of competences are uh, furtherly developed. It doesn't mean that when designing a CLIL teacher training course, you need to include all of those. So the person who is developing this training uh, course or these training uh, sessions can choose, or the educational institution, can choose which of them are um, necessary or more necessary in uh, their context, right? So there is this group of uh, target professional competences that, as I was saying, are furtherly developed. For example, uh, target competences group number two, which is related to CLIL fundamentals, and then um, as you can see, the competences are um, uh, described, are defined as clear teachers are able following the, um, the competence uh, definition, uh, the, the European definition of competence, right? So um, um, clear teachers are able to do these things. They need to acquire these specific skills, okay, uh, when we talk about CLIL fundamentals. 
The same uh, structure repeats uh, or is repeated with the rest of the uh, target competencies groups. There are eight groups of them, and each of them fully fledges um, those competencies that we considered um, were so necessary or were essential for uh, clear teachers to, to uh, be able to feel uh, safe in their uh, daily practice. Um, we were very lucky when we designed this because we could count on the support, help and cooperation of a group of international CLIL experts. As I said, uh, Gisela Langer was one of those, uh, but uh, there was um, um, uh, Carmel Mary Coonan, there was uh, Ugo Batten Spets more, uh, there, was, uh, there were experts coming from uh, Spain, from Great Britain, for um, Estonia. So we um, we had experts coming from everywhere to help us think uh, about uh, about these competencies and define these competencies. Then each uh, professional competence is related to what we call the professional development modules. The professional development modules um, summarize the contents of the modules which are taught, which are developed to help these teachers acquire the competencies. Okay, the, there are three professional development groups of modules. Each one of those is furtherly developed. Each module consists, consists of non-sequential components and the description of those components. And those components are linked to the target professional competencies, which means that if you have uh, teachers who need to acquire a specific professional competence, you have this specific development module to help them acquire that competence. By um, defining, by developing those modules, what you do, what the, educate, what the um, educator provider um, does is to create the content to be taught to teachers to be able to acquire those uh, professional competencies. So, for example, the professional development module number one, which was approaching CLIL, has four different components, right? Um, you can see two of them there, not the four of them, because there was no, uh, not enough space in, in the slide. But, for example, the approaching CLIL um, professional development module, which has four uh, components. The first component has to do with situating CLEL. And then what needs to be taught um, to teachers for them to be able to situate CLEL in their approach to CLEL, in their acquiring competences to be able to approach the CLEL teaching, um, well, this would be the contents, competences for the information age, by a multi and plurilingualism overview, bilingual education, past and present, assumptions and facts, clear contexts, models and variants, clear objectives, clear aims and objectives within a regional or national and institutional infra infrastructure, autonomy, authenticity, agency, professionalism and personal profile. You can see there um, target professional competence standards 1, 2, 4, and 8, which means that this specific component, situating CLIL, will 
cater for the acquiring of the professional competence which have been defined in 1, 2, 4, and 8. So there is this um, really strong link between the um, target competencies and the professional development modules. Um, because the aim is that when you decide that these are the competencies you want uh, the CLE teachers to develop, these are the modules and this is the content that teachers need to be taught. Then what you can do with this framework is to decide which parts of it, which elements um, uh, in there could be useful and necessary for your teachers, for your CLIL teachers, for the teachers that you are training. And then you can develop different courses, you can develop different modules, different training modules for your teachers, and you can expand the training and advance in the competence acquisition um, um, uh, step by step. So you can start a very, you can develop a very basic training course and then build on that one with another one and then build on that second with another one. That is the beautiful uh, about this uh, framework, that you can start um, by a very uh, small uh, thing and then add to it. Um, as your teachers acquire uh, competences, you can add more competences to their uh, training. And of course, it will vary from country to country, from region to region, from school to school, if necessary. But all the training is based on the same principles, and it is all based on the same structures and on the same concept. And this is what we meant to achieve, and this is what we meant when we said um, we need to develop something which is transferable. Of course, not prescriptive, because as I was saying, um, you can um, uh, choose, you can pick up a bit here and a bit, a bit there to make, a, to design a tailor-made uh, training uh, course. The effect is a competence-based, competence-developing tool that incorporates good practices of general pedagogy, adapting and modeling them for clear contexts. And it accommodates competences that teachers acquired in previous training, but can translate to the clear context because they haven't been trained for that. What the effect is not. As I said, it is not prescriptive and it is not restrictive. Okay? Um, you can use it in a very flexible way. The added value of the European Framework for Clear Teacher Education defect is that it is intended to serve as a point of reference for providers of teacher training across Europe. It can be used in that. Way. It aims to contribute to the development or to the enhancement of CLIL training that will support uh, teachers in their daily practice. And it is a way for building high quality CLIL programming. It is kind, it is the tool, the resource which could uh, help CLIL teacher. Uh, educator providers, um, clear teacher education providers, um, a basis for curriculum development. Thank you very much for your attention. Sorry, uh, I think this was um, slightly longer than uh, we had foreseen, um, but uh, I hope it was useful uh, for you. Um, as the 
as the video has been recorded, you can access it and check all the different links uh, if you want or need or are interested in in accessing the the framework. Many thanks for many thanks to all of you and many.